When the FIA established the Grand Prix Formula One World Championship and the World Sports Car Championship in the early 1950s, Maserati decided to join the party that Ferrari, Jaguar, and Aston Martin were having on the road courses of the world. First came the biggest engine they'd ever built, a 3-liter DOHC6 based on the power plant from the 250F Grand Prix racer. Then they borrowed the 250F's chassis, which got stretched and fitted with a Carrozzeria Fantuzzi body. Though the shape was never tested in a wind tunnel, it proved slippery and stable, not to mention attractive. And the beauty proved to be a beast at Sebring, Monza, the Portuguese Grand Prix, the Paris 1000 kilometers and the Nürburgring 1000 kilometers. The CMC seems to be on a mission to up the ante with every new release and their model of the 300S's long nosed body and low stance look exactly right. Smooth, tightly fitted and pristine, the replica looks like a Concours winning restoration. Get closer and the CMC touch becomes evident in the real leather hood and trunk straps, the stamped metal side vents and a quartet of bare metal hand laced wheels. The body is a mix of die cast and stamped metal with real rivets, spring-loaded catches, and almost impossibly delicate latches on the boot and hood, which operate just like the real thing. Those features and the Maserati Trident cloisonne at the nose, which is clearly legible under magnification, tell the tale. This is a serious replica. As such, it takes a bit of concentration and dexterity to appreciate. The doors open with a simple snick on nicely crafted spring clip hinges and shut tightly on spring loaded catches. There's a tiny vent flap on the driver's side fender that opens too. Now those are easy. Getting the hood off, which requires loosening up leather straps, working buckles free and tweaking amazingly scaled cross-drilled latches open isn't. But all is forgiven once the Maserati's inline six heaves into view. The engine's a wonderful visual smash up of cast and painted zinc, plastic, vinyl, steel and brass. The crisp metalized Weber carburetors have tuned metal velocity stacks and legible metal serial number plates. The steering shaft complete with universal joints makes its way under the induction system toward the steering box, while up top the twin crinkle finish cam covers sport pinhead sized chromed acorn nuts. Every hose is clamped and every pipe has a fitting, and everywhere everything is readable, right down to the aftermarket radiator cap. Real leather trim covers the seats and the photo etched steering wheel spokes set off the gauges, wired in fuse block and scale correct switch gear on the dash, built in above a polished stamped steel floor. Frame elements are everywhere, reflective steel stampings make up the seat backs and the driver's seat is further braced and riveted to the bulkhead behind. Go under the car and the exposed rear mounted transaxle and its environs are realized with metal frame castings, articulated suspension mounts and fine gauge copper and steel piping for the brake and fuel line. Go forward and sections of the cooling system are fitted with rubber hoses and steel clamps. This isn't modeling kids, it's masterwork from the realistic palette of metalized finishes to the exquisitely small hardware used to hold everything together. Spin the laser etched Barani knockoffs threaded correctly for each side and you can heave the Dunlop and Blazon tires and spoked wheels for an even closer look at the thinned cross drilled brake drums and working suspension. The show ends out back, another pair of leather straps and a single lever open the boot. Inside is a stainless steel fuel tank, a strapped in spare and a bird's eye view of the rear suspension and chassis. There aren't many models out there that can entertain like this one does and though it's expensive, there isn't an element of the car that doesn't pay the collector back in heaps. The bare metal, the beautiful polish, the fine scale detail and sheer wonderment at some of the gadgetry, tangibly challenging though it may occasionally be, make the 300S one of CMC's most engaging pieces ever. So, want to know how to make a killer model car? If you're CMC, you make it one glorious piece at a time. This one gets our very highest recommendation. For Diecast X, I'm Joe Kelly Jr. We'll see you on the shelves.